All right, so I'm here today talking about Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways, and mostly what I'm going to be focusing on is the open source updates we did right before the holiday break. So just quickly, my name is Julie Turner. I'm a partner CTO with Simpraxis Consulting. Here are multiple different ways to get a hold of me, uh, but primarily today I'm going to be talking about Learning Pathways, which has its own GitHub repo. So what I want to uh, point out is some changes that we made to the repository structure with this release. So previously, all our source code was not provided, and that was a conscious decision by Microsoft that they wanted. We wanted to work on the code base and get it really stable before we released it. Um, so some changes that were made with this release is that we uh, updated our repo to uh, be have the main name instead of master. Um, the docs folder is always uh, where all our manifests for the content, the lists and everything live. Uh, images were always there. Installation used to be called web part. So that installation folder is where you're gonna find the pre-compiled solution package, as well as um, manual installation scripts and some other scripts for fixing things up. Newly added is the source folder. And so I'll, I'll go into more detail on that in a few moments, but the source folder is where all the styling and the web part source code lives. What I want to talk about today is because we've open sourced the solution, I want to talk about quickly the contribution guidelines that we're going to have on the repository. So we are not going to accept any pull requests on that docs folder. So that docs folder is where uh, Microsoft's manifests of playlists and assets live. And because of the shared nature of that repository. We're not going to be accepting pull requests on that. Microsoft will manage those lists. And so anyone who does a pull request on that, I will just close it down. Uh, and we'll be thinking about that and reviewing that, and we may change that policy later. But for now, that is that is the stance we're going to take. Uh, we want you to target all your pull requests to the dev branch. That way, uh, we can fully test and integrate them before we move them into the master branch and release them. So please target your updates to the dev branch. Also kind of keep your pull requests fairly simple, right? Give me a great overview of what you changed and in as much detail as possible. So it makes it quicker for me to review it and hopefully get it in and rolled into the solution. And if you have an idea for a big change, we're certainly open to that, but please submit an enhancement request idea so that we can um, chat about it ahead of time and make sure that the solution that you're proposing is something that's going to fit into the overall um, architecture of the solution. So then back to the source code, that source code folder has two main folders in it, the style guide folder and the web part folder. So uh, the development team was comprised of myself and Stefan Bauer and Stefan Bauer uh, built this style guide solution that basically is a web app that runs that shows you all the component parts of all the design components within Learning Pathways solution. So the style guide is its own solution and the SCSS that lives in there gets imported or pulled into the web part code source code on build time. So the web part folder then has our SharePoint framework solutions inside of it. And so from that perspective, we have uh, this directory structure underneath it. So we have the custom learning web part, which is the viewer web part. We have the custom learning admin web part, which is the, um, the admin UI. And we have a set of common code, as well as a couple of reusable controls that sort of sit outside the structure, the file picker, for picking the images for uh, the play, custom playlist and custom subcategories, as well as a recursive tree control that I built to be able to pick uh, what subcategory uh, or category playlists sit in when you're uh, using the UI. Okay, so that's all I had for slides. So let me shut down my PowerPoint situation here. Oop. And let's take a look at the source code. So um, again, we have the GitHub repo here. And like I said, we have that docs folder and inside that we have, you know, the learning pathways, playlist and content for V4 and V3, they sit in here as well as the SharePoint success kit. Okay, so we have that docs folder, that's where all the manifests live. And then again, I showed the source code, this is that style guide app. 
and this is the web part code. And again, this is just SharePoint framework solution. So if you're familiar with building for SharePoint framework, uh, you know, all of this is what you would expect. Okay, so this is where that source code lives. And, and again, if you, you know, if you have some ideas or, or whatever, feel free to, to get started and, and help uh, make the solution even better. Okay, so then the other thing we wanted to talk about was the Microsoft Teams integration. So one of the things we're going to be doing in the future, and Vesa uh, mentioned this earlier, is that the 1.12 version of the SharePoint framework is going to have a couple of features in it that we kind of have been waiting for. for so from a styling perspective, um, there's some things that Stefan did to make the web, viewer web part behave nicely in the different locations on the page. So if you're in a one third section or if you're in a full bleed section or wherever, the web part behaves nicely in that. He did some, some work that is, you know, a little hacky at best, but it was our only solution. With the 1.12 version of SharePoint Framework, we're gonna be able to revisit that and hopefully make that a lot more solid. So that will be something that's coming in the next few months after the 1.12 SharePoint Framework release. The other thing that the 1.12 version of the SharePoint Framework gives us is the ability to put a more complex Teams manifest in the solution. So in the source code, we'd be able to bundle in it a, um, a manifest that's more complex. What that more complex manifest is going to allow us to do, so I'm going to demo right now. So we have the, the learning pathway solution, and when we go to the viewer web part, if people are um, familiar with this, we have the ability to deep link into the web part. So if I go into one of these um, playlists, I can click my link button, and it's going to give me a link to my, it, because I'm on the viewer web part page, it's going to give me a link back to that page, but with deep linking in it, so it comes right back to this location. What we've done with the 4.1 release was that we added Teams deep linking. So when you have added the Teams um, manifest for a private app for Teams, and you're in the Teams solution and you click the link, it actually recognizes that you're in Teams and gives the deep linking context that's needed so that if you use this URL, if I copy this URL and I paste it over in here, it's going to deep link back into that same location in the Teams app. Yada, yada, yada. Load, 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 load. There we go. So it comes back to that same location. So that feature, we're going to be able to release more uh, officially with the 1.12 release, but I will be sharing the manifest that I used for this so that others can uh, take advantage of that manifest and manually deploy it in Teams. So that is um, a new thing that I will be deploying shortly within the next couple of weeks. I think that's about all that I wanted to share about that. So that was all I had. Is there anything now, else you want me to cover, Vesta? Uh, yes, Julie. Can you briefly explain what is the learning pathway is and why people would actually care about it? Let's not assume that everybody in the call actually remembers what it is oh, and sure. are familiar yeah. with it. Yeah, so learning pathways is, um, it's, it's a well, it's a set of web parts. There are two web parts in the solution that surface through an iframe, iframe technology, documents from support.office.com or docs.microsoft.com combined together into a playlist of content to help people learn things. So this is the, um, this is the home of the content. Um, and we have um, different categories of content. So like a getting started, your first days using Microsoft Office 365 or uh, recommended playlists. And we have content and playlists for products like Word and Excel, um, content about like how to do rows and columns, for instance. And once we get into that content, we have uh, playlists that walk us through each of these uh, tasks that we might need to do. Now, the viewer web part that you can use can be put in in any uh, site collection can be added as an app into any of the site collections in your um, in your tenant. And then you can inline learning content in with the rest of your content. So it's a way to basically distribute learning in through your tenant and reuse content that is uh, hosted right in the uh, central location. So we have the Learning Pathways Administration web part that I mentioned earlier 
that helps us uh, uh, basically go through and decide what we want to show and what we want to hide uh, as far as like which playlists. And there's also the ability to go through and show and hide different technologies. Uh, like maybe you have not implemented Teams or PowerPoint or Yammer, for instance, and you want to hide all Yammer content from the from the solution, you can you can do that. And so then it also allows us to do use other solutions such as um, the SharePoint success site. So the SharePoint success site is what's called a new content pack, and it has learnings and playlists managed by a team at Microsoft just around SharePoint. And so this content you can also add uh, into your content set for learning pathways. Um, to provision learning pathways, you can do it in a couple different ways. One way is to use the lookbook site. Um, I think I might have that memorized. Look, lookbook.microsoft.com. So you can go to lookbook.microsoft.com and there is solutions for learning pathways. And I guess this is probably small. So zoom in a little bit. Um, so we can go into the solutions and then Microsoft Learning Pathways. And if you are a ten global tenant admin, you can provision learning pathways into your solution um, by adding it into your tenant once you've signed in. But you do have to be a global tenant admin because this is going to deploy web parts into your solution gallery. So you have to be a global tenant admin. That's the security level you need. Um, if that's a problem for you, we have documentation in our GitHub uh, site about how to manually deploy learning pathways. So you don't have to actually provision the the, uh, cust the site collection. You can add a site collection manually and then provision learning pathways in. You won't get the template pages that are just sort of like getting started pages, but they're not necessary to run the solution. So that's how you get started with uh, learning pathways. And then uh, I did mention the SharePoint success kit, so I'll just point it out here. The SharePoint success kit is an add on content pack and site collection for learning pathways. You might, a prerequisite is that you've already deployed learning pathways into your uh, tenant, but then you can go to the SharePoint success site template and deploy that into your solution. You will want to, before you do this, it, watch this very short video. It's like a four minute video that just gives you the step by step on how to provision it because there is a little bit of a trick. You have to add that content pack that I was showing over here. This content pack has to be added manually in. Um, so you need to do that final step or the solution won't work. Cool. That's that's okay. a really good summary. There's a great question, by the way, from Wayne related on your demo. Can you set a learning path for a particular user profile? So can you do a targeted uh, learning paths uh, for a new employees as an example? versus just showing everything. Oh, for sure. So like, I, I think what you're saying is like, um, if you had like a, we have this playlist that I had from a different demo. So luckily it's just right here. We had this uh, customized. So we took this six simple steps. Welcome to Microsoft 365 that Microsoft built. We made a copy of it because uh, it's, it's a feature of the admin center. And we made a custom playlist called Welcome to Your First Week at Acme, Acme Company, whatever. Then the playlist is a combination of Microsoft provided assets and our custom assets, which are just pages in the site, right? So we made custom pages on, you know, enrolling your mobile app or creating an email signature. Um, so that custom content, then you can take this content and Maybe if I get wicked lucky, I can I can find Acme HR. Oh my God, really? Seriously? Oh, sweet. I did find it, Acme HR. And so if we go to this Acme HR site, we can see that we have a custom human resources site where we have this welcome to your first week at Acme link. And that link has the playlist embedded right in it with some extra content that we just put on the left hand pane. So you can absolutely drive your users to this content specifically. So it's not audience targeted in that way, although this is just a page in SharePoint. And so of course you could secure it or email it or you know create a news feed on it. You know, lots of different ways to use SharePoint to make uh, make that content get to your users in the way that is best works for them. Does that help answer yep. the question that's helped yeah absolutely helped um so that that's a really good and and just to recap the learning pathways is a free solution 
helping every single uh, company in the world to help to train their employees easily. So it is really targeted for providing answers directly inside of your intranet. So surfacing that Microsoft support material and guidance and videos and all of that inside of your intranet so that people can easily find it. Um, so that's that's what it's uh, intended to use. Anything what I'm missing there related on objective perspective? No. No. That was a good way of putting that then. Okay, cool. Yep. Thank you, Julie.